Hello students, uh, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this uh, video demonstration uh, showing how to put together a simple assembly inside of SolidWorks here. And so here we'll emphasize some of the mates that you may need to use in order to successfully complete, say, the CSWA um, exam and specifically the assembly portion there. And so this first example you can see is a simple kind of toy assembly, if you will. Uh, you might have had something similar that you played with a child. And so on sheet two here, um, I have some of the dimensions associated with some of the mates here. And so you can see I've got an angle mate there in the top view at 30 degrees we'll have to deal with. And then also these little collars that are on the red and green rods there. Um, we have different offsets there, so we'll have to achieve that as well. And so um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to place the origin. So I've got an image here of where I want to place the origin. And so you can see it's on the very front face of this yellow disc member and it's concentric with the hole in the middle there. And so with that um, you should have everything you need to uh, determine the correct orientation of the assembly there. And so again a lot of these things I would encourage you to uh, pause the video at this point. You've got screenshots now uh, from the video of the overall assembly and also what you're seeing now. And so go ahead and try to model it on your own. And then if you get stuck, that's when you can watch the rest of the video in order to determine the correct route to get there. And then of course at the end we'll check our center mass to make sure we achieved what we wanted to. And so with that, I'm going to top into SolidWorks now. We'll go ahead and go New Assembly. I'll go ahead and cancel off here for a second and check my units. IPS is the correct unit system for us. And so for my base feature, I'm just going to bring in one of these yellow circular disks. And so from the assembly, I'll go insert components, go down to browse. Here we'll go into the desktop. And I believe it's the connector 30 is the yellow disk, yes. And so I'm just going to plop it down in space. And I go to ISO there. And so one thing to note is we are float or fixed currently. That's what the F stands for next to the part name, connector underscore 30 there. And so for the first part, I'm going to float it. Uh, the reason being is because there's the assembly origin, as you can see, and that is not located where I want it to be. Um, instead of hovering over it, we can also go to View Origins. And you can see this one out here in space is the assembly origin. And so we need to fully constrain that first. And so I'm going to turn origins off for now. And so the, reason, the way I'm going to do that is going to be using some planes. Um, I'll go ahead and select all of the assembly planes and go ahead and show those. And I've got to go up to View Planes in order to see them. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the planes on the component part there. And so with that, we should be able to get going. Um, here's our Mate tool. And so first thing I'm going to do is grab that front face of the connector and make it coincident with the front face of the assembly, the front plane of the assembly, excuse me. And then I'm going to mate the right planes together. And at this point, it should be able to slide in what would be the Y direction. And so now I'll mate the top plane of the part to the top plane of the assembly. And that should fully constrain this component part. And so you can see with those series of mates, what do we have? Three different mates there, all coincident. Um, I've now fully constrained this part. You can see it doesn't move in space at all. And also if I check the origin location of the assembly by hovering over it here, it is in the exact location we wanted there. And so we're off to a great start. Uh, at this point I'll go ahead and hide the planes just because it's going to get cluttered if I don't. Uh, so let's look on these rods next. So I'll start with the blue rod there. And so I'll go, not open, but insert. Components here, I'll browse uh, the blue rod. It's a little hard to see, so let's go to larger icons here. There's the blue rod, 3.25 inches lower over length, I believe. And so just dropping it in space, I'm here, I suggest you use the rotate tool in order to get it close to where it needs to be first. So just like so. And now we're ready to start with the mates again. And so mates, first thing I'm going to do is select that outer cylindrical face and the cylindrical face of this hole and that should make them concentric. Now I can slide along that axis. Um, we need to go all the way to the back of the hole, so I'll select that very back face and the corresponding face on the rod. And those become coincident. And at this point the rod can now rotate about this. And so it's a little hard to see, but if I twist it, it is rotating. Uh, the way to really see that is just to go ahead and pick a plane like the top plane here show it, and then if I go view plane so I can see, as I rotate this thing, 
you can see this little gray line associated with the planes going around there. Uh, so in this case, it wouldn't really matter a whole lot uh, just due to the axial symmetry of the part itself. But in some parts, um, you have to get that plane constrained in the correct orientation in order to have your mass props be correct. And so to just to get in that good habit, I'm going to take that top plane and made it with the top plane of the assembly here. Looks like those will be right in the same plane with each other, so it'll be coincident there. Um, I could have also used something like a parallel mate there would have allowed me to get the same end effect. So at the other end of the blue one, we just have one of these yellow connectors. Um, instead of going to insert component, since I've already got one instance of that component in the assembly, um, what I'm going to do is hold control down and just drag off of the uh, first component there. And so what I did is hold control down, I selected and held down my left mouse button, and then dragged off of the first connector 30 component in order to create a second instance of it there. So that's a very quick way to create multiple instances of the components. And then here we're basically going to replicate the same steps we did um, with connecting the blue rod to the, the yellow component on the left hand side. And so I won't talk during that, I'll just run through this fairly quickly. This is the same exact series of mates that we were working on. And here um, we're at a parallel mate. Um, so one thing I could do is just select these two faces and make them coincident there in order to lock down the rotation of that connector 30. Uh, so, so far so good. Now we got the red rod going up vertically and so that's a new component so we'll just go insert components and select the red rod. Uh, now I'll use the rotate tool in order to get it aligned roughly in the correct direction which helps this mate tool predict the correct mates. And So there's one There's two, and now we still have the rotation, so we're going to do a similar thing um, by getting into the planes of the rod through the little flyout menu here, and mating it, say, with the, the front plane here. And putting in an ISO there. Uh, doing good. Uh, now we're up to the sphere connector. And so, again, insert components, browse, go to the connector underscore sphere. And so if you look at the sphere, we've got holes on the very top and bottom, and then kind of the whole pattern uh, around it as well there with the, what, one, two, three, four, five holes there. And so what I'll first do is go ahead and make it concentric. And then also we know that the end of this rod fits inside of this hole. And so we'll go ahead and get that part done. And now this thing spins about the, the axis of that red rod there. And so this is where we have to pay attention to the drawing and so if I go back to the PDF there you can see that there's a 30 degree incline in here and also notice on the, from the top view here um, how the holes are set up. These two holes kind of straddle that blue line. So if I go to the top view here um, it's not going to be like this but it's going to be more something along those lines. Uh, so in order to achieve that um, we'll take a look in the planes of this sphere connector and so what I'll do is go in here, uh, that may be one that you have of interest, and so that front plane. I'll go ahead and show that plane. And so here we've got a couple different things. Looks like we've got a plane 5 in here as well. We don't really need that one, so I'll hide it. Uh, but now we're looking at the planes. And if I go to the top view, you can see that 30 degrees, when I get it roughly here, is going to be between the front plane here and, and this plane here which is the front plane of the assembly and so I can select these two planes and use an angle mate there in order to achieve that 30 degree angle from the drawing and so that's exactly what I'll do I'll just go to mate I'll select the front plane of the sphere the front plane of the assembly by default it's parallel notice they're not going to lie in the same plane that's why it's um, going parallel not coincident but for right here I can do an angle mate and so here um, there's 33 degrees I'll just type in 30 here hit enter see if it updates uh, that looks really good and so I'll just accept that. And so now I've fully constrained the sphere connector. And so now I can get rid of some of these planes here to, to remove the clutter from the drawing. 
Uh, so with that being done, we're ready to now put in the, the rods associated with the sphere, right? So the green and the red rod. Uh, so that's going to be fairly similar, just making sure I need to get it in the correct holes here. And that would be this hole and this hole here on the bottom side. And so since that's going to be quite similar, um, for the most part, I won't talk through what I'm doing unless I see something that's a little bit different that I need to emphasize. And so first, grabbing the green one and placing it. And so here's my green rod. I'll rotate here, make concentric here, drag it down, coincident here. And we're getting pretty good here. And so let's look and see what we have here. Uh, those are some planes. Now the issue I'm having here is I'm thinking about, okay, how am I going to lock up the cylindrical rotation that rotated about that axis of this part? And so that's what I'm thinking in the back of my head. And so let's look back in the sphere and see if we have a planes that can help us with that. And so like right here, I've got a plane associated with the rod, a plane associated with the sphere, and it looks like that would help me lock up that cylindrical rotation. And so I'll just go ahead and select both of them, had them pre-selected, went into the mate side of things, so now I can apply that coincident mate there. And so, very good. Now that green rod is going to be fully constrained. On the other side there was a red rod, right? Yes, and so we can go ahead and hold control down and pull off from the existing one. Let's create the red one. Oops, missed that one. There we go. And do a similar item over here for the first couple mates. And so again, the, the usual problem here. So let's investigate some planes here to figure out how we're going to constrain the rotation of that part. Uh, there was a plane 5 in the sphere, I remember hiding it. And so let's see where that's at in the sphere. So here I'm just digging through uh, the sphere's features. I'm going to plane 5 there and showing it. And yes, it appears plane 5 would be our plane of interest here. So I'll kind of pull out from plane 5 so it gets a little bit bigger here. And it appears that runs right down the axis of the red rod here. So we're talking about that plane and the axis of the red rod. And it looks like that would be a great choice for a coincident mate. And so I've got plane 5 of the sphere selected at this point. Now going down to that rod and getting, say, the top plane there, holding control so I can have both of them selected. And then going straight into mate allows me to apply the coincident mate. And so... Although it can get very messy, as you can see, like looking at all the, the planes, uh, sometimes it is useful to see those in order to, say, constrain the rotation of these cylindrical components. And so at this point, we just need to put in the collars. And so those should be fairly easy. Um, we'll just go insert components. We'll go browse to the collar. I'll just do one at a time here. And so that collar we know is going to be concentric with the rod here. Um, also it's going to have a rotation to take care of so I'll just go ahead and grab the the top plane and then that was this rod here I believe so we can mate the planes together here. And now this thing should just be able to slide since we've taken out the rotation. Um, that dimension needs to be what 1.5 inches from the the free end here so from this face to this face needs to be the 1.5 inches. So I've got them pre-selected at this point by holding control when I made the selections. And so I'll go to mate, and by default it's going to make it a coincident mate. But here we want a distance mate down here. And so I'll go ahead and hit the distance mate. What is the value? It's 1.5. So 1.50 here. And just hitting the green check mark accepts the distance 1 mate. So you can see that fully constrained to this part. And then another distance mate on the right hand side and so I'll just hold control pull off of that part oops accidentally hit everything there so escaped out of that hold control pull off the part 
and that gives me the second instance of the collar and then we'll just repeat the process here and so two cylindrical faces to become, cons become concentric um, we'll worry about the rotation next and so grabbing a plane out of this collar part there's the rod 2.25 notice they highlight in the tree or highlight in the graphics area when I get hover over in the tree which is nice and so that mesh right here will kill the rotation and then there's just the translation along the axis of the red rod there. Uh, 0.5 is the offset distance here so just like last time go here and here for the selections and then the distance mate needs to be 0 0.5 and then coming to an ISO here gets me the end result I believe and so now that we've arrived at our, our final goal, uh, let's check the mass properties here. Uh, 1.12 for the x coordinate, 1.51 for the y coordinate, and negative 0 0.2 for the, the z coordinate for the center mass. Uh, does look good there. Uh, 0 0.15 roughly for the overall mass, but and that should be fairly easy to arrive at, just as long as we grabbed all the right components and the, their quantities there. And so I believe we have arrived at our um, desired destination if you will and so thank you for watching the video I um, hope this helps you out in uh, working with assemblies and all of the different mates you can apply there and so thank you again